Hello and welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt, that's Alonzo, that's Christy. Uh, they're gonna talk about RBG, uh, the documentary, mm -hmm. right, about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, but before they get to talk about that, I'm gonna tell you that uh, TYT has an app. Yep, Woo that's correct. Young Turks has a new app uh, called TYT Plus. You can go to the App Store and uh, search TYT Plus, click Get, or you can go to tyt.com slash app, A-P-P, uh, and you can get our free content, you can get member exclusive content that includes this show, uh, includes things like Nerd Alert, uh, Pop Trigger, the main show, Aggressive Aggressives, you can get all of that stuff on the app, you'll get notifications when new episodes go up. Uh, so download the app, check it out, it's pretty cool. Uh, and now I will let you guys talk about RBG. Go Alonzo, go. Oh sorry, I was putting the app on my phone. Wow, it's so <laughs> See, easy, it worked. it's so easy you can do it from the comfort of your own desk. There you go. <laughs> all right, so RBG, but, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you think you know the whole story about her, but there is so much about her life that is extraordinary, she was one of the first women to attend Harvard Law School. Uh, she uh, was a, an early champion of women's rights cases, and in fact, uh, worked with the ACLU to pass a lot of landmark uh, gender discrimination cases. Uh, in some cases, uh, ones that uh, where men were the victims. So she was uh, on point for this very early on. Uh, she had an extraordinary marriage. Um, she's one of our great legal minds and she's still uh, shaking it up on the Supreme Court, take a look. I ask no favor for my sex. All I ask of our brethren is that they take their feet off our necks. Forget the bull in the china shop. We welcome today Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's become such an icon. Do you mind signing this copy? I am 84 years old and everyone wants to take a picture with me. <laughs> I became a lawyer when women were not wanted by the legal profession. She was following in the footsteps of the battle for racial equality. She wanted equal protection for women. I surely would not be in this room today without the determined efforts of men and women who kept dreams alive. My main takeaway from this is that RBG made me want to go to the gym. I was thinking about that. Because <laughs> the first thing you see her doing is working out with her trainer, with yeah. her, her little three pound weight, but she's doing it every day. Yeah. She's right. in she there. She kick my ass. Right, osteoporosis. She's not gonna have it, she's fighting it because she's in the gym building bone density. And we need her to stay alive a long time. Oh, so more I'm than ever, very yeah. glad she's taking care of herself. <laughs> no, I was, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I went in already sort of a fan, sure. you know, but I did not know so much of this stuff. Me you know, I did not know that at one point, <laughs> well, during her years at Harvard Law School, she had a two month old baby. Her husband was getting radiation treatments from cancer and she was doing her own course load and getting all of his course load stuff from other people uh, so that he wouldn't be losing out uh, for all the time that he was missing class and she made the law review. Yeah, you know, she a woman done. doesn't sleep. Yeah, what yeah. she should have done is found some really rich dude with amnesia that she could have <laughs> pretended. Was Apparently her. so, or get a night nanny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but it's interesting though that that pattern that she established in law school is what her schedule still is to this day. Yeah. You know, she talks about how her husband would have to drag her away from the office to come and eat dinner, <laughs> or you know, now she's still awake till like two o'clock in the morning. You Four. Know, Four o'clock in the morning, yeah, she gets only a few hours of sleep every night and is still, you know, so sharp and spry and finds time to go to the gym. I don't. I know it's hard on this. And the opera. And she's I love her. She's she's in the opera. Yes. She gets to fulfill this lifelong dream of <laughs> appearing in an opera. It's, it's so lovely. Yeah, it's it's very much a worshipful picture of yes. her. This is not exactly a warts and all look oh, at yeah, Peter no. Ginsburg. <laughs> But it, she's such a fascinating figure that, like, why not appreciate the, the multitudes of her? The fact that um, that she has this, you know, she's little, but she's tough. Yeah. And she's, you know, brilliant, but she's also got this romantic, artistic side and a softer side to her. I like the uh, scene where they're in her chambers and she shows all the different collars yes. she likes to wear <laughs> with her robes and how they've been gifted to her by various people and she wears specific ones on specific days. Like this is my descent collar. This is my descent collar, <laughs> yeah. Some are like these really ornate, like beautifully handmade lace collars and some are bejeweled. And so to see that within her too is, is interesting. Uh, her friendship with 
Antonin Scalia. Yes, it is really fascinating. <laughs> that was like, wow, okay. But, but you knew yeah, that already, right? I, I don't think I had okay. picked up on that somehow. Okay. So yeah, so that was fascinating. Um, they both love opera. Absolutely, yeah, that was that was their, their meeting point. But over opera. just, yeah, you know, I, I think it's also one of those movies where in telling a person's life story, you're just covering this really interesting period of history. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at what America was like for women, you know, in the 40s and 50s, and then the 60s and 70s, and and up until today, and how she was at the forefront of so many of those battles, and how, you know, I I, I certainly find this with the young gays, where they don't necessarily have a clear picture of how we got here, right. and how it wasn't always what it is right now, and it took a lot of you know, fighting and and activism and court cases and all this stuff to get to this thing that we're, we've arrived at. And same, I think for for women probably. Obviously, both of our groups have a long way to go still, <laughs> and a lot of things that we don't have. But uh, where women are now, I, I think a lot of people need to remember how not that long ago, right. like in their parents' lifetime, in their grandparents' right. lifetime, things were way worse. Yeah, a few decades ago. And and her granddaughter also, well, she graduated from Columbia Law School, but her, her granddaughter just graduated from Harvard Law yes. School and is carrying on you know, the, those traditions as well. Yeah, I don't know how she did it, like as a mom and a wife and working, doing important, important yeah, pick work. Pick it up, slacker. Jesus, <laughs> I, I sit on my butt and I watch movies and I complain about how time consuming they are. Like, I'm not you know, writing important case law. <laughs> like generation defining case law. So mm. yeah, I, I loved it. And um, it could not be more timely or more relevant or more important, as you say. Um, yeah, I think if you think you know her, she said. Yeah, you'll you will learn things. Perhaps you don't. Oh, also, and they do address the the pop culture phenomenon of her notorious RBG. And yes. they show like you know they show one of my favorite parts of the whole thing was her watching Kate McKinnon. Oh yeah, for the first time doing the Ginsburn doing doing the bit on SNL during Weekend Update, and she'd never seen it, and she yeah. got a total kick out of it. Like it's <laughs> it's cute that she can she can appreciate her place in pop culture. She and likes all the memes. She talks about how notorious Big and I are both from Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 it's, yeah, she, yeah, she's really cute. She's got great timing and she's she's stealthy she's kind of like a ninja cuz she's so low key and so quiet and then like she has a little zinger for you yeah. like that so yeah i loved it i'm saying an 8 same here 8 okay so our number is an 8 it's at 91% on the tomato meter i think it's just new york and delay this week but if you are interested in it go find it someplace soon near you bye